Welcome back to Set Streets and Needs, guys. I'm Chris Bauer. So I'm in front of an abandoned Burger King in Claremore, Oklahoma this morning. Um, I was driving by it uh, last night. Uh, I stayed here on my way through uh, heading out west and I thought it would be cool to start the morning here. Um, it hasn't been abandoned that long, but it definitely had a 1990s color scheme. So uh, as you guys can tell, those stand out because they are getting rarer and rarer. I thought we'd kind of go over and look at it together. Uh, I have to point out, I'm wearing my Asteroid shirt today. This is one of my favorite games from, not the 90s, the 80s, the old Asteroids on Atari. Did you guys have Atari growing up? I had the Atari 2800. I didn't have the, what was it, the 52, 5800, 5600? I don't remember, I think my neighbor had one of those. Whatever, it was the later one, but I had the 2800 which is I think the one that everyone else had. Either way, Asteroids was one of my favorite games. Anyway, I saw this one when I was shopping at 80stees.com and I thought, that is my favorite game. That's the box art. It's on a t-shirt, gotta have it. And I got it. And you guys should too. Check out 80stees.com. Smash the link below in the description and check them out. They've got thousands, tens of thousands of your favorite 80s memories on a tee from your favorite games, movies, Chuck E. Cheese, Rock Fire Explosion, you know, all the good stuff that we love on this channel. They got them at 80s tees. They even have a few choices uh, in the fast food realm, kind of like this Burger King. So uh, we're going to check out this Burger King today, and I hope you guys will stick around and check it out with me. Let's go see it. So they definitely obviously had a large play area, which Burger King's always had those really tall play zones. That was kind of what they were known for. They definitely always were trying to one up McDonald's on that front. This one still actually has tables and chairs in it. Again, this doesn't look like it went out of business that long ago. It still has the shoe cubby over there. Anyway, this blue and red color scheme <clears throat> was, um, I think it was 1999 to early 2000s they started doing this. Um, could be a little bit earlier in the 90s. You guys can let me know in the, in the comments below. But I know that's when they debuted that um, logo that You guys know the logo I'm talking about. It's the, of course, it's kind of the modern day logo, actually. Well, the new modern day logo is a throwback to the old logo. So, but the modern day logo, I'll put up a photo of it, debuted in the late 90s along with this blue and red color scheme. Um, and then they did variations of that all the way through the first 20 years of the 20, of the 2000s. And then they've done, since 2020, gone back to a throwback of their old logo which was the logo I grew up with, and it was from the logo from the 1960s all the way into the late 90s. Um, they had that logo for over 30 years, so, um, and that's kind of the logo they have today. So it's basically the Burger King in between two buns. You know, it's a classic, why change it? I think that's what they realized. Looks like we still have some signage, which is a variation of that newer logo right here inside the lobby. The BK on fire. So, this is a store. Obviously, I mentioned I'm in Oklahoma and we are very close to Route 66. So, they obviously had some Route 66 decor. You can see the Route 66 street or road symbol there. I'm sure there. 
they probably had old 50s pictures and all kinds of stuff like that hanging around the restaurant, I'll bet. That's pretty cool. McDonald's used to have a bunch of those, but uh, of course got rid of them a long time ago for the gray box look, which is awful, as we've discussed on this channel many times. Yeah, I mean, I don't think this was that old, which is kind of crazy why it's closed. Um, but, you know, it looks like to be 90s, early 2000s. It could be earlier. I mean, the, the, the brown tile so versatile. Those things could have been put in in the 80s for all we know, even earlier. You know, those things, uh, those restaurant tiles are, are very, uh, they're almost ageless. Uh, they can go in in any era. And then they can just really switch out tables and chairs, honestly. Because um, if you look at these booths, the booths have some wear on them. I'm seeing some some rips on the bottom of that one. But they're like a, uh, they're almost like a glittery, they kind of shine. It's hard to tell in this, but um, they could be from any area as well. The marble-like tables kind of, they kind of yell 90s. I don't know why. They just have that 90s look. But either way, it's the right era outside color scheme-wise to be 90s. So I'm going to assume it's probably 90s. But it is close, so it is interesting. Very interesting. But they took the sign down off the side here. Which, of course, when they strip these, uh, any fast food place, they try to take all signage off that they can. So, of course, that, you know, since they're no longer here to gatekeep anything that's going to happen to it, they don't want their signs used in anything nefarious. So I get that mentality. The drive through. And again, you can kind of tell it just wasn't, it doesn't look like it's been years that it's been sitting here. It almost looks like it's been months. <clears throat> you know? It's kind of crazy. I mean, I could be wrong. Who knows, you know? Lots of cleaning supplies. <laughs> Little Coke signs still on the wall there. There's definitely some Coke signage here on the drive through window that they forgot. But it just says Coke. It doesn't really indicate Burger King. So they didn't really quite care, I guess. But, but you know, just the shards of what remain. Not much. Uh -uh. It's all gone. Just a waste away. Such a shame. Such is life, though, right? These retail establishments come and go, and we put something else in their place, or they just never, something will just either tear this down, or it'll just sit here empty for years. Who knows? But, uh, interesting. Of course, they took the outside sign. Uh, except for the playground part. But, you know. All gone. Just sit here alone. Next to a Starbucks that will probably never close. Well, 
not much else to see here. I just thought it'd be kind of cool to see an abandoned 90s Burger King. Um, again, the, the blue and the reds is what sticks out about them. Um, yeah, obviously, we see abandoned Burger Kings, abandoned fast food places all the time. But the, when you see the older color schemes, um, because they're getting rare and rarer, they stand out. So that's what makes me realize. Because as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, 90s. Because, you know, it's, and that's how you know that, again, just like McDonald's, all fast food places are doing this where they're going to these ikea iced box like modern whatever you want to call them uh designs and we're getting so used to them now that these old style buildings or older even though this is only 20 years old um are standing out because they become rarer and rarer and rarer and rarer uh you know so which is such a bummer because another 10 years from now i mean we won't even a lot of people won't even remember these. They'll be so old. You know what I mean? It's, uh, that's, I guess, a huge motivation for me of documenting these. You know, is to make sure that uh, they get remembered, I guess. You know? Because I, I don't want this stuff to get forgotten. Not just because I remember it so well, but I want other people to remember it, too. I do like this, by the way. This exit only sign. It's got the king, the old king on it. I think it's kind of cool. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm gonna move on, head out west. I'm sure you guys will come back for some more videos. Maybe we'll find some more abandoned Burger Kings. Who knows? But till then, see you guys later. Thanks for watching, guys. See you at the next one. Bye now.